started. Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Lotus Circle podcast. My name is Daniela, and I want to welcome you. Um, the Lotus Circle podcast is a podcast for millennials and progressive adults where we talk about personal finance, professional self-development, and navigating the adulthood space. So if you haven't seen my yes. first video yet, this is my second video in the Women's Entrepreneurship Series. And I'm actually sitting here with my beautiful friend from St. Louis, Paula Dolores, who is the CEO of the Melanated Bar. And so um, for this series, yeah. I'm actually highlighting uh, women entrepreneurs who are either well-established or who are still up and coming. And so they are going to share some insight uh, into their company, how they got started, why they got started. And so if you have hopes of starting a very similar company, then hopefully this podcast can help you. So uh, let me go ahead and start off by uh, reading the bio for Paula Dolores. Um, she is a Midwest native who has successfully turned her self-care routine into a blossoming business uh, called The Melanated Bar. The Melanated Bar is a natural skincare line and lifestyle brand that elevates women's mind, body, and spirit through self. Before starting her business, Paula Dolores graduated with her bachelor's in psychology and business in 2015 and went on to work as a recruiter in Chicago. So although she enjoyed working in human resources, she became deeply depressed and unfulfilled. She was also pregnant with her second child and knew that it was time she started to focus on herself and do uh, what will feed her spirit, otherwise she would fail her babies. So she took a vow to do everything she can to work on her mind, body, and spirit so that she can be the mom her children deserve and wife her husband deserves. And so the Melanated Bar is dedicated to emboldening women to live a whole life through self-care, self-love, and self-awareness. So Paula, again, welcome to the show, and please feel free to add anything Thank that you. I can add to your bio. You're, you're welcome. And so um, please share with our guest uh, who you are, where you're from, and essentially how the Melanated Bar came to be. Yes. Okay. So, of course, um, as my bio stated, I am a Midwest native. And I pretty much say that because, yes, I was born and raised in Chicago, but I also spent a large portion of my adult life in St. Louis. Yes. So, I like to throw in mid. Yes, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to throw in Midwest native just so I'm not saying, oh, I'm from Chicago, born and raised. Then I'm in St. Louis and, you know, just Midwest native. That's yeah. what I know. Yeah. Um, the Midwest bar, um, Pretty much, it started based off of a dark place that I was in my life. I wasn't quite at that threshold where, you know, everything was going to pits. Like, life was great. I had a good job, good paying job, you know, fresh out of college, making a lot of money. But it was like something just wasn't there. Um, you know, we're big in psychology, as psychology major. So I don't know if it was like, you know, hormonal imbalances, chemical imbalances, or whatever was going on. All I knew was that I had to make a change. And I just couldn't sit around and just keep going how I was going. Right. Um, so that day, I literally looked in the mirror when I was pregnant with my second daughter. And I was like, Paula, yeah. get your life together, girl. Like, it is time. Like, you can't keep doing the same things and expecting different outcomes. Or you can't say that you want to be happier or more fulfilled. Right. And you're not trying to figure out what's going to make you more fulfilled and happier. Exactly. Um, so it was just pretty much that day I took a vow to myself saying, you know what? You're now on a journey for your mind, body, and spirit, and you're going to start with your body. So that day, I literally, like, ripped through the cabinets, and I threw out, like, everything that had all that junk in it mm. and everything, like, all that, ugh, just threw it all out, girl. I think I was using coconut oil only for, like, two months before wow. I started whipping up my own product. Wow. <laughs> yes, I used it, like, to wash my face, to wash up with, wash my hair, to moisture, like, literally, I had a big tub of coconut oil. Yeah. So... I just started whipping my stuff up, and then um, I started making the facials and the body oils. And one day, and this is when it started, one day I'm in the shower for literally like an hour and a half. Yeah. And when I stepped out, guess what was around me? All of my products that I mixed up, and I felt amazing. Wow. So it was, at that moment, I'm like, 
Paula, you feel good. You know, you're in a great mood. Like, you ready to go play with your children. You ready to cook dinner. You know, you ready to start, basically. And I'm like, if this helped me, I need to share this with other people who may be feeling this way as well. So, that's how it started. Yeah. And I just called to the Melanin Bar. Yeah. All right. So, what was yes. the creative process that you had to go through in order to formulate the different um, scrubs and oils that you have through your company? Like, how mm -hmm. do you actually think of those different recipes and, you know, do the research to figure out, okay, Ro like, you know, Roy's water or rose water is actually good for this or vitamin E is good right. for that. Like, what's your, what's your process? So, basically... Um, when I first started, I was just like Googling a whole bunch of stuff and I found a whole bunch of like different natural, um, mom blogs where they just post these little recipes that they created on their own. Mm -hmm. Um, so after seeing all of these, you know, I started mixing their recipes, but then I began to learn, you know, what essential oils go with this, what kind of oil you should mix with that, what makes this sense, you know, what makes the right texture. So it was a lot of like, I would say it was like a learning curve. Yeah. Because, of course, I'm not a chemist. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I'm not a chemist. So it just took a lot of time, a lot of studying, a lot of notes for me to really get these formulas and these recipes down pat. But it's like once it did, it was amazing. Yeah. So it was just just studying, you know, optimizing Google, using yeah. that because, I mean, how many free courses is out there? Yeah. A yeah. bunch. Yeah. Um, and just to actually give mm -hmm. our audience some context, uh, some context, I actually met Paula at the 21 Summit, which took place this year um, in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it is this big emporium that I like to, you know, I like to use that word a lot. So it's like this big space right. where you can meet um, women who have a very similar uh, viewpoint and perspective similar to yourself so if you are entrepreneur if you are like a poet or a graphic designer you go into this space and you meet like-minded women and you're able to connect with them and you're able to really foster um, great relationships um, and they have a series of you know very uh, important and educational workshops so this year one yeah. of the workshop leaders was Danielle Leslie and she talked about uh, the different ways that you can actually mm -hmm. capitalize on your own skills to create like an online course that right. teaches people. Right. And so I met um, Paula while standing in line for like a photo booth. And so she was like, oh, I'm, yes. online. I'm from St. Louis. And I was like, oh, my God, me too. Um, and so she mm -hmm. actually gave me a few samples of her uh, products. And so I've actually been using your face serum as well as the um, rose clay mask. And uh, let me tell you, that thing will leave my face mm -hmm. glowing. And so I'm the kind of person like, I really yes. believe in, you know, using the product and then, you know, giving uh, a very accurate synopsis of how my experience was with it. So right. I loved it. Right. I loved it. So amazing work, amazing work. So we've talked Thank about- Thank you. Oh, no, you're welcome. So we've talked about the creative process for you in crafting, you know, your your um, your products. How did you mm -hmm. like? When did you realize that the natural skincare line business is actually a, a a profitable business? And then the second part to that question is, what did you do to find out who your target audience members are? Okay, so. For one, when I first started the Melanated Bar, um, I didn't think that it would just be a natural skincare line, um, which is why now I'm starting to say natural skincare line and lifestyle brand, because I'm starting to, you know, move to that next part in my life um, where I need to start, you know, helping others in that way. But I think I started to learn that it was a profitable business when I started posting on my Facebook for just my friends and family, and they were, like, buying it up. Yeah, so I'm like, like wow, like, like these are just, just my friends and family support. support. Imagine, Imagine if I get on Etsy yeah, and start yeah, selling. Imagine when I launch uh, Instagram, Instagram and start, you know, marketing, marketing through there. And, and when, when I start getting these sales consistently, I'm like, hold on, you just literally mixed up a clay facial and it's selling. Like, this is crazy. And people love it. So once I just started seeing the sales come through consistently, and obviously starting off, it was, it was slow, yeah. but, but it was the consistent, okay, one, one sale, sale this week or one sale that next week and two sales this week. So just having those little small consistent sales in a moment of my business where I wasn't like for running with it yet was that motivation to be like, okay, Paula, if you put in the work and actually do it, 
then this could be a profitable business. And it turns out, okay. And this, I think it's an error. It keeps hitting it. But that's when I realized that it was a profitable business. So. I was like, you know what, keep going with it, keep running with it. And although, you know, I'm not in the business for curing acne or anything like that, um, it works. That's the point. It works for keeping your skin clear and, you know, giving you this glow that everybody wants that we talk about nowadays. And then it also and then it also gives you an opportunity to spend that five, seven minutes on yourself. And the essential oils in it, it just tops everything off. Like, it literally feeds your body and your spirit every time you put a facial on. Like... Girl, I'll talk all day about this. Yeah, and then the second question, question what was the, the second, second part? part? So the second part is, I'm talking. What? <laughs> it's okay. The second part is actually, um, how do you how do you actually target your target audience members? Like, how do you know who they are? So, so this, this was, was really hard for me at first. So, so remember, I was talking about my friends and family supporting me and buying my products up when I first started. Yeah. So, so I went through a period in my life where I was literally just on Facebook marketing it towards them. And, and then, you know, after like the first couple buys, you know, it was like my older aunties and, you know, yeah, stuff like that. that. Yeah. They just stopped purchasing. And I was like, you know what? Like, Paul, you're doing this all wrong. Like, they're not your target audience. Like, yes, if they're in need of, you know, self-care, obviously but you, you can't, can't sit here, here and market towards your family and friends you, you have to literally go out there and find your target audience so i think it took a lot of me understanding why i created the melanated bar and who i was that's when i really realized who my target audience is so it's like the young moms the mompreneurs the entrepreneurs like yourself um business women nine to five women who work like career lives that go to their nine to five and come home and take care of their families and still juggling mom, mom life, wife life and everything like that. And they don't have time for themselves. So this is literally for like the women who, who wants to spend more time on themselves, who needs that extra push. And you know, who just needs some inspiration in their life. So just sitting down and really getting in touch with who I am and what my business is. That's how I was able to find my target audience. Okay. Awesome. 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 All right. And so you don't have to, for this next question, like, you know, give your business <laughs> secrets, but, um, what tips do you mm -hmm. have for someone who is interested in starting a natural skin care line plus a lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Like what tips do you have for them when it comes to starting it up? So I actually talked to a few women, like at pop-up shops, shops and dinner shows that I have participated in, yeah. and they're always young, and they're always, you know, so passionate, so I always tell them, like, one, here's my business card, card call me. Yeah. You know, I'm not one to, you know, say, oh, this is hard, this isn't for you. No, if this is something you want to do, then I'm going to be there every step of the way to help you do it, because honestly, I didn't have anybody there to help me out with it. So I would say, what I tell them is, one, use Google. Yeah. Everything, Everything is free on Google. Google. Yeah. Like, like literally, literally. Use Google, um, tell, tell your relatives and your aunties and uncles, cousins, mom, dad, that you're interested in starting this skincare line. Because I literally, my husband got married in 2017. My auntie gave me uh, how to make your own essential oils book for a wedding gift. Right. So because she knew I was interested in this stuff. So now I have Google and now I have this book to look into. And, and that, that sparked, sparked my next step to go into the library. library. It sparked, sparked my next step in, you know, reading, reading into more ingredients, ingredients and understanding what exactly I want to put in my product. So I would say research, research, research. research. That's, That's the only thing I'm going to because nothing is like a one formula type thing. Hey, Business-wise or recipe-wise. Yes, I agree with you. Like, I... I really implore people to to take their time to really be intentional mm -hmm. about what they're going to pursue because I think that it's so right. easy it's so easy for us to replicate what we see but I feel that you also have to have mm -hmm. an understanding of what it is that you're going to do so it's about exactly. that, the research but it's also about applying the action after the research um, because I remember I remember mm -hmm. Mila from the conference she you know she talked about how you know, how many of us actually want to do something and we spend so much time learning it and then we get to a point where mm -hmm. we get comfortable or we're too afraid to start. So do your research, but then also right. apply action behind the research. Mm -hmm. Then it will mm -hmm. feel like you're not wasting your time. Because I know for me, exactly. I have a tendency of like creating all of these wonderful ideas. I do the research, but then when it 
But then when it actually comes time for execution, I can't do it. Um, or, you know, I feel mm-hmm. like it's too, it's too unrealistic, but I kind of feel like you honestly have nothing yes. to lose. So if you're going to take mm-hmm. the time to do the research and then, you know, take the time to actually apply action behind that. Right. 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 And, and then my thing, thing is, like, even when, when I was saying, saying um, you know, do your research and get the, all the information, like, like touch on, like, don't, don't wait, wait until you have, like, like 10 books of notes, notes then start, start your action plan. Because then, then at this point, now you're overwhelmed. You don't know if you should start here or there. So, so it's, it's like, like, do your research and then, you know, do a little bit of the action. Yeah. And, and then do some more research and then do a little bit more of the action. Yeah. So I definitely agree with that. Yeah, yeah. So what are the different ways or what different mechanisms do you use to actually um, accumulate your products? Like, how do you source your, your products for your company? So I got a lot of my vendors and um, wholesalers by following the mom blog that just make recipes just for themselves and their family. Um, and then, you know, as bloggers, they always credit their sources. So I literally would go into the mom blog, I would look, look through it, and then I would compile a list of wholesalers. And then after I get that done, I will go to the wholesale pages, and I will make sure that they're accredited, they're um, certified non-GMO, they're always organic, um, and things, things like that to make sure that I'm giving my customers the best products. Yeah. But honestly, um, when I first started, I didn't have access to those um, suppliers. So what I would do is I I did I shop on Amazon. Yeah. I got a lot of my um, containers, a lot of my charcoal and stuff off of Amazon, and that's how I started because it was easier when, you know, the, the income wasn't coming fast. It's, it's easier for me to buy small, even though, though it was a little bit more expensive, expensive than giving all this inventory yeah. and I don't have no, no way to sell it. Yeah. So, so yeah, I did a lot of my starting off on Amazon and now I finally just made my way to the wholesaler. That's great. That's great. So what are some tips that you have for new business owners that are in this industry um, on how to price their products? Uh, you mentioned mm-hmm. how they can actually start looking for their vendors and wholesalers. Um, mm-hmm. and I don't want to, I don't want to overburden the question too much. So like, let's start off with tips okay. that you have for pricing your products. Like, how do you know that your product is, um, in a neutral state compared to other companies that are in the same industry? Right. right. Okay. okay. So, so when, when I first, first started pricing my products, I think I honestly just threw a number out there. there. I'm not going to lie. I was just kind of, you know what, this is how much I paid. Pay. I, I did, did some, some weird, weird division, and, and I was like, like this, this is it, yeah. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> um, and so that number, that number honestly was a golden number for me because I still stuck with it. Oh, wow. Like, like still to this day, my price, yeah. yeah. So, so like, it was, was like a lucky guess, guess and it honestly works. works. So now when I'm sourcing, well, when I'm purchasing these ingredients and I'm plugging it into my sales spreadsheets to spit out, you know, my number, time the labor, time the, you know, the labels and the packaging and everything like that. Um, it, it still spits out relatively, relatively close to that twelve dollars for a clay show. Yeah. Um, and, and so, even with the twelve dollars, I have comments like, "Oh, the jar is so little, and, and it's twelve dollars." And I have complaints, but honestly, what I tell people now, um, and I just got to this point, I tell people like, "This isn't like a a, a need. This is like a luxury item. Like, you don't necessarily have to have it or whatnot. This is something that." You are buying because, because you want, want to spend, spend that extra self care time on yourself. Right. It isn't one of those things where clean, clear, chill wash. Like, yeah. you know, that's going to be easily $4 at Walmart because, because that's like a necessity. No, this is this is a luxury item. So, so this is for the people who you have like that extra 15 to $20 at the end of a paycheck and they like, oh, I just love this brand. Let me get that. Let me get this. Let me go buy me a candle and here's my self care routine. So I stuck that. Yeah. yeah. So I, I stuck with that twelve dollar mark and it, it works for me. Um in my sales spreadsheet, spreadsheet, I know I touched on it, but I'll just say it just in case it's just parents and your line owners um tuning into this. My spreadsheet, um, I have two tabs. One tab I have all the products that I buy and I have a market and break it down by how much that ounce costs. Um, and that's very easy to do. They can email me if they need more help with that. And then on the next tab I actually have like Lavender clay facial. Then, then I have how much the product costs, how much the, much the packaging costs, how, how much is the labor. Then I have how much is the labels for it, and then I have also shipping on there. Um, so, so after doing all of that, it spits out my 
wholesale number, and then I time to buy another amount, and I give them my retail number. So that's basically how I come up with a lot of my pricing, for sure. Wow, wow. And so did you did you uh, originally craft this um, formula, or did you find a template and then just modify it to your company? Honestly, I crafted it myself. You know, if, if you're a business owner, and I won't, and, and you're just, you know, kind of book smart, even not even book smart, but you could put two and two together, and, and you know what you're, what you're, what you're selling. selling. Like, if I pull out, I probably could have had some products out here with me. If I pull out a product, and I look at it, I'm like, okay, and then just paying for the product inside, I'm paying for the actual jar, I'm paying for the label. So I'm like, no, 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 no. Let me add a label in there. Let me add containers. So it's kind of just knowing your business and knowing um, what exactly your customer should be paying for. Yeah, okay, awesome. Awesome. Okay, so then when you were starting off your company, did you have like a business plan or are you just kind of like working off of, <laughs> I noticed that this is an area where people need, you know, products. For you know, whether it's yeah. like you know eczema or you know um, a scalp disease, like how did you kind of mm -hmm. rolling with or without a business plan? So basically, when I first started, like I mentioned, um, it was kind of like that aha moment type thing. So I didn't have a business plan. I would just kind of like, you know what? It, it made me feel good. good. Let, Let me just start, start selling it. it. So I literally just bought some jars and started making it up, and I posted it. And at this point, I was writing on the jars, like, with a gold nice. permanent marker. Nice, okay. Yeah, so I didn't really have a business plan, like, starting off. But eventually, it got to the point where I mentioned I started seeing the consistent income coming in, you know, the one sale a week, the two sales a week, the three sales a week, um, and so forth. And so it was at this moment, I'm like, you know what, Paula? If, if you're going to scale your business and you're, you're going to try to make it in a profit business, business, you need a business plan. plan. So, so this is when I started um, following certain businesses on Instagram that um, inspired me. This is when I started doing more research. This is when, um, you know, I started going to the library and literally checking out books about how to start a business for dummies. <laughs> literally, that simple. Yes. And so I started picking up podcasts. I started, I started like, you know, taking, taking notes and then I just put everything in action and it just started on that right before my eyes. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So what are the different items that you need um, from a county, state, federal business perspective? Like, what do you need mm -hmm. to start your business, for example, in this specific industry? Because... Um, I know that with the food industry, for example, you need your LLC, mm -hmm. your, you know, INC or whatnot. Then you need your EIN e right. number. And then you need um, mm -hmm. your business license from the county. But when it comes to the actual health care or, you know, skin care um, industry, like what other licenses or certifications do you need to actually um, perform or operate successfully, rather? So, so really now, now I have oh, oh I pushed my glasses up too far. So, <laughs> so right now I have insurance through my LLC that, that you're able to purchase. So, so it covers, you know, certain costs and certain abilities. Um, I would have to literally look it up and see exactly what all it covers, but that is available um, for those who do make, um, you know, natural skincare products. There's also regulation where you have to list all of the products that's in your ingredients, um, and then you also can't make claims. So the FDA doesn't allow you to make claims on, um, this will cure acne. You just can't say that. You have to phrase it in a way where you're not making these quote-unquote quote, false, false promises, promises in their head um, um, to, to the customer so it's not misleading or whatnot. Or they, or they can't, can't come back and say, oh, this is supposed to cure my acne, and it's not. So it's just certain ways that you protect yourself. And honestly, once you find in these wholesaler um, websites that sell these organic ingredients, they have a lot of resources for business owners. I'm not going to lie. Like, they tell you exactly how to strip products. They tell you exactly, like, what's the ratios of essential oil to oils, the carrier oils. So you can protect yourself and not use it. Um, and then they even, like, um, free labels for you as well. So these websites... Um, they, they sell, sell the products product wholesale, but they, they also care, care about their, their um, business partners, partners which, which is why they have these resources available and communities. Listen, this is this is free, free information right now, and you don't have to research <laughs> any of this. 
and you know, like that, like that's right. why I have I have this whole women's entrepreneurship series is because I want people to mm-hmm. get like the condensed version of what really matters when it comes right. to starting your business and keeping it afloat. Um, and you know, essentially mm-hmm. having a vision for it two to five years down the line. I want to be able to, you know, give information that makes sense and is, you know, is relatable mm-hmm. because I think that many of us we have great ideas, but we don't know where to start. And right. you know, we have Google, mm-hmm. but it's kind of like, how do I even calculate sales tax? Like, how do I even know that I should pay right. sales tax for this particular state? Like, you know, when it comes to reporting my mm-hmm. earnings, like, how do I do that? And so I want to have right. this platform where I can share um, wisdom from my guests or from me, and we make your life easier. Because I really feel that the whole point of yes. entrepreneurship is really for you to have have an income that you can rely on besides work. Because I don't think that you should just have one right. stream, you should have multiple streams. And so being an entrepreneur just gives you that advantage. Right. No, no, I 100% agree. agree. And, and that's, that's, that's why I mentioned that I listen to podcasts, podcasts. Like, like, literally. literally. Turn, Turn off that Beyonce. Beyonce. Like, Beyonce, Beyonce yeah, she be cracking. Yes. <laughs> Turn off uh, uh, Megan Thee Stallion, all of them. them. Cardi B. And I love Cardi B. Yeah. No. no. Turn, Turn that music off because, because you're listening to the same song every day. Instead of turning on a podcast and getting all this free. Girl, these podcasts be so good. Yes, yes. Like, literally. Yes. So, so good. good. Like, I, I've been in the middle of cooking, cooking like, like, with my hands on, and I have to go run to my desk and take some notes. notes. Yeah. Like, like, it's free information. information. And you can listen to Cardi B later. later. Yeah. That part, that part, <laughs> that part. So, what are some podcasts that you're mm-hmm. listening to right now? So, so I listen to a lot of the Gold Digger um, podcast. Her name, Her name is Jenna. Jenna. She's so, so good. good like, like she's so inspirational, inspirational. Um, like, like she's really good she has a lot of like influential people on her on her on her, her podcast. podcast she, she even, even had Michaela Matthews Matthew, side hustle pro, pro on her podcast, podcast. And, and that's and that's how, how I found her, her. And, and then my sister mentioned her, her. So, so the gold digger um the side hustle pro my leak teal my taught you her podcast I listened to a lot of Emily De La Cruz I believe her money and marketing um, um, it's, it's some other, other um, podcasts, podcasts out there too that I listen to, but those, those are the top ones, and I definitely tell you listen, listen to them, download them, download them, and always plug each other, so you can find the next one just, just by listening to one. Exactly, exactly, and it's free, and, and it's free. free. Exactly. Yes. yes. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. All right, so let's go ahead and talk of about. Course. Let's go ahead and talk about um, what what you know now as a business owner, and what you wish you knew before you started. Woo. So, <laughs> I actually took notes, notes for this. For this. Okay. I'm not going to go through all, all of it, but two of the main things is um, I learned from Jenna Kutcher. Let's go ahead and name. Jenna, Jenna Kutcher on the Gold Digger podcast. podcast. Um, she, she taught, taught me about, about building hype. So, so a lot, lot of people nowadays just make something and post it for sale, like even just starting off. And it's like, okay, yeah, you sell clay facials, but I mean, I'm just not hearing about you. I'm not going to just drop a hundred dollars on your product and you're just now coming out so So she she said build hype build build hype around your stuff you know do a seven day countdown in seven days i release a a a new facial six days oh this is the key ingredient in this facial five days oh this facial smells good or tag your buddy who you love this so little stuff like that so when it comes down to day one and i release the sale i actually have these numbers coming in and, and that's the one thing i wish i've known, known which is hard for a lot of new business owners, owners to know because starting off you just don't know yeah. that's, that's definitely one thing, thing. Um, um and the second is patience to avoid burnout when, when i first started, started girl let me tell you i wanted to do this that this that, that over there over here down here up there i want to do everything and i would get and i would get so mad at myself because i could not like i would literally like burn myself out because i'm expecting myself to go from bottom to six figure ceo overnight and that just that caused a lot of pain it it's a resentment. It's out of my tears that night. So I just wasn't making, making those steps, steps that I wanted to make. Yeah. So, so just being patient, patient and understanding that it, it just takes one step a day. Yeah. You, you can't, can't do everything overnight. overnight. Rome, Rome wasn't built overnight, overnight. <laughs> at all. So, so that's, that's one thing that I could. Two things that I definitely could tell for new business owners is 
build, build hype, hype and, and imitation. imitation. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. So if you can actually summarize the steps that someone should take in starting a natural skincare line, what would it be? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, one, one research. research. Two, two, write down, down like maybe two products, products to start off with that you want to sell. sell. So, so for, for me, it was the facial and it was the serum. Uh oh, give me one second. Okay. Okay, okay, there we go. I thought I put my phone on do not disturb. It's okay. <laughs> so it would be recent then two write, write down two products that you will be interested in selling. Mm -hmm. Three, make the product. You know, you know don't, don't order a lot, go on Amazon, Amazon or go to your um local health food store and buy some organic product and mix it up yourself. Mm -hmm. Um and then four, test it. I don't, I don't send out any products that, products that I make, make even, even now, now, even though I perfected my recipes, I test every batch before it goes out. So test it out. And, and then, then get, get some friends and families to try it out, and then, and then make a post about it. it. And, and after that, you know, if it, if it, it seems, seems like a goal, create, 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 create an IG, create a Facebook page, page. You know, just, just start getting, getting your name out there, there which goes, goes back into the building, building the hype around, around your product. So, so that's, that's definitely, definitely the first step that I would take. Awesome. And thank you for sharing that. That is really good. Really, really Of course. Awesome. And so where do you see your business in about two to five years from now? And two to five years from now, let me see, let me see. So I, really, I really see myself post-selling a lot of my products. Um, I don't see myself, you know, being the hustler at all the trade shows every weekend, slinging my products. No, I want to be to the point where my products are in Sephora, my products are in Ulta, my products are in Macy's. Um, I want to get to the point where when people see the melanated bar, they understand, like, oh, well, well, I have a work week at work. Let me grab this bundle. Let me check out and let me go. And the reason why I say wholesale is because then that's less work on me. You know, of course, I'll still be doing my marketing here and there, but I don't have to do it by myself because now I have these brands behind me showcasing my products on sale. So I think that being where I would be at in the next two to five years. And, and then also, also I, I see me, uh, um, you, you know, know going more so from, from the natural skincare line, line to the style brand. brand. Yeah. So, so turning into a, a hot spot on the internet where I just form a community called a self care tribe, which I kind of started on Facebook already, um, where we could just come and talk, you know, give out free resources, talk about, you know, what helped you through the week, you know, what do you do when you have anxiety attacks, you know, what do you do when it's a negative person in your space? Like, how do you adapt to these situations? And I feel like these, these conversations, conversations need to be had, and, and I want the melanated bar to be the one to have these conversations with, with the others. So, so that's, that's why I see us in the, the next two to five years. I love that, and I'm actually going to follow yeah. Yeah. the uh, the group on Facebook. And so once we get off, I'll go ahead and do yeah. it I'm really a proponent of mental health because it, you know, it's important. Mm -hmm. Many of us actually struggle with anxiety, right. um, and I think that if you can have a community that um, focuses on the same thing and you know we can both right, right. we can all actually support each other and then oh, an right. inclusive environment mm -hmm. will help us in dealing with the day-to-day -day challenges that we all deal with um, because life can be hard and exactly. life can be hard and so if we have a community of like-minded individuals life it makes, you know it makes life that much easier yep. to cope with and so, awesome. No, no that's, that's, it. that's that's true. Yeah, this has been really, really good. And so now we're actually going to it has. So now, now we're going to actually um, <laughs> head into a segment of the show that is called Inspiration Avenue, which is where you are going to share um, a quote or adage that you have heard throughout your life, and that quote or adage inspired you or changed your perspective and or life. And then you're going to share with us why the quote is impactful. Okay. okay. So, so one, one of the quotes, quotes and I wouldn't say this is something that I learned my whole life. life. I think yeah, it honestly started, started with my older sister, sister when I was crying over a breakup with my boyfriend in uh, college or whatever. And so I'm calling her and I'm crying. And, and at this point, I didn't understand it. But it means a lot to me now. So she was like, girl, cry. Build a, build a bridge, bridge and, get and get over it. Ooh, I was like, like no, yeah, 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 I was like, oh, you cold. But, but after, after that situation, situation I started to think about it. Like, th that, that day never leaves my mind. mind. I'm like, you know what? what? This, this is so true. true. Even, Even in business, business nowadays. nowadays. Um, um, I phrase it a little bit different, but it still means the same thing. Do what you can today 
and, and the rest tomorrow. tomorrow. So, so it's, it's a little bit different, different but, it's but it's still the same thing. thing. You know, don't, don't stress, stress over what's, what's happening today. today. You know, you, know, you, 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 you got to get to tomorrow first. first. You're sitting here crying about how you're going to make it through tomorrow and tomorrow not even here. What you going to do to make it through today? Yeah, yeah. Then it's about, you know, not letting certain stuff hold you back. Like if if you get a no from a potential wholesaler or a stockist, okay, fine. You're upset. Get over, get over it. it. Move, Move on, on to the, to the next, next one. Yeah. Like, like, life never, never stops. Stop. Life, life isn't going to stop. So, so as long as you keep going with life, life you'll be all right. right. And, and that is some of the things that um, definitely helped throughout my day. Yes, I love that. And I actually have one more question for you before I let you go from yeah. Yeah. recording. Yeah. How, do you, how do you actually scale and grow your business? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So, so scaling, scaling and growing your business. business. Ooh, so, so it took me a while, while honestly, to get to this point, point, point in my life. life. Yeah. So, so a lot of the things, the things that I do is when I have friends who purchase my play facials or whatnot, I say, oh, girl, girl send, send me a picture. picture. And they send me a picture. And, and guess what I do with those pictures? I post them for content creation. creation. That's, That's how I scale my business. I use certain hashtags, niche hashtags to get my brand out to the people that I'm looking into, like the gold getters, the gold diggers, the black CEO or the girl boss. Things, things like, like that, that is what I post. And, and even currently now, I've been in like a, a midpoint of, okay, Paula, okay, you're getting these sales, sales you got the website popping, you know, you, you got the blog post going on, but nothing's moving, moving forward. forward. So, so it got to the point where now I'm learning to utilize call to action. Mm. Now, now I launched the influencer program. As well. so, now, so, so I don't have to be taking these pictures or badgering, badgering my friends who aren't content creators mm-hmm. <laughs> to take these pictures for me. So I have these constant flow of images going through my phone where I could just post, 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 post. post, post. Yeah. And so now they're posting on their pages and now I'm reaching their target audience. And so when their friends grab it from their page, now I'm reaching their friends target audience. So that's just, it's just all about networking. Um, content, content creation and, and call to actions, actions are very important, important and I think that's how you can feel. Awesome, awesome. Well, Paula, it has been a pleasure um, connecting with you, Yay. learning about your business, learning about who you are, and 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 pretty much what what pushed you to start this enterprise that you have. Um, right. We're always going to be here to support you. So please go ahead and drop some Thank details. Thank you. Welcome. So please go ahead and drop some details on where our audience members can actually fi- find you and then where they can actually buy some of your products. Yes. yes. So, so um, um, if you want to get in contact with me, I'm Paula Dolores across, across everything. PaulaDolores.com, Paula Dolores on Instagram, Paula Dolores on Facebook, Paula Dolores on Twitter. So you can contact me through that. For the Melanated Bar, you can go to PaulaDolores.com as well, or you can just go to the TheMelanatedBar.com. And I'm also the Melanated Bar across all social media platforms, so the Instagram, the Twitter, the Facebook. You can definitely find me on there. You can shop through my Instagram. You can shop through my Facebook. You can shop through my website, whatever's convenient for you. But I look forward to connecting with you, and I'll definitely Shoot, shoot Daniela over these, these, these um, contacts, contacts and these links, links so that she, so that she can share with her audience as well. as well. Yes, thank you. And I'm definitely going to include it in the show notes so you guys can certainly have that direct that direct um, access and link. Um, and then in terms of The Lotus Circle yes. Podcast, yes. you can find us on uh, Instagram at The Lotus Circle Pod. We are also on Twitter, T-L-C-P-O-D, mm-hmm. on Facebook, The Lotus Circle Pod. And then if you have any questions, suggestions, or concerns, then you can email us at TheLotusCirclePod at gmail.com. Um, and so before we hop off, remember to stay hydrated, to stay dedicated, and also yes. to stay motivated. Yes. Yes. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much for I'm tuning for tuning into the show. And until <laughs> next time, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.